Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. I'm your host, Jake Combs, and tonight we have some unboxings for you, as well as a look at Broken Realms Kragnos. So we're going to do the unboxings first. Now these are all, well with the exception of the Ironclad, are all items that actually released, well, technically yesterday. Um, so you can pick those up at your friend, in friendly lo in local gaming store. Now, as far as uh, the Broken Realms Kragnos book, um, it is available for pre-order as of right now, and it was actually given to us uh, for the purpose of our review uh, by Games Workshop, uh, just so that you are aware. But as always, they may have supplied it, but that does not guarantee uh, my that does not sway my opinion in any way. Um, but we're going to go ahead and open up these vampire items and the Arcanaut Ironclad. Now, some of you may kind of look at this and, you know, kind of wonder how these things all kind of tie together. Um, uh, for me, they do, uh, specifically because, um, at least for Radukar, um, and Kritza, possibly Lady Anika as well, uh, they tie into, uh, the Cursed City game as far as at least the storyline anyway and the Arcanaut Ironclad is basically what I'm going to be using as the the team's ship uh, basically kind of the centerpiece of the game table um, but otherwise it's not actually going to be used in any sort of army at all so you know we're gonna be doing the base and everything to match that theme just for that purpose alone uh, Kritza, because uh, you know he got his powers in the Blood Kiss in the same city, uh, um, Ulfenkarn, as Radukar, um, and actually received the kiss from Radukar. Uh, you know we're definitely going to be doing him as well. I have a feeling that him and Lady An Anika, likely Radukar the Beast version, uh, will see some sort of article in the White Dwarf to uh, go towards the game. Now, I have not heard anything officially, and just keep in mind this is just me speculating. Uh, but with that possibility in mind, that's why I wanted to go ahead and, and get started with each of those. And then also the Dire Wolves, I have a feeling that they're going to come into play. And worst case scenario, if they don't, since I am building a Soul Blight Gravelord, Gravelord's army, Dire Wolves are definitely going to come in handy. Uh, but to match the overall theme, I am going to be doing some of their bases in the same uh, aesthetic as well. Uh, so that way they kind of fit in. Uh, these ones will just go more in lines with the the zombie bases that I'm doing. Now, so let's go ahead and get these all opened up. Um, we will be getting them assembled this week, so that way we can actually start with the basing right away. Now, for the one that I was most looking forward to, we're going to go ahead and open up Radicar first. Now, for those that either have Cursed City or have uh, either watched our video or other videos, uh, we'll definitely notice a distinct difference between the Radicars. Uh, that one is Radicar the Wolf, and this is Radicar the Beast. Now, the Wolf is currently a um, kind of a, a print-on-demand model that you can get right now, along with his entire court. Um, since we have the Curse City game, we don't need the court um, or him separately because we already have those. Um, now, this version of Radicar, having read the Curse City book, um, which is a prequel to the the actual game itself. Um, this is the version of Radicar that I was picturing all along. Uh, the only thing I'm not certain of is if I hadn't seen this picture before I started reading the book, would I have, a, have would I have pictured the same version of Radicar? Um, hard to say because uh, I can't go back and unknow the things that I know. Um, but the book was fantastic; highly recommend it. Um, the, I did the audible version as well, and the the gentleman that was reading it did a fantastic job. Um, so, with Radicar, we have two sprues, and then uh, so this is mostly uh, a couple 
minor body parts, mostly for the uh, the thralls that are going to be hanging around him, um, part of his chest, and then mostly some of the log and some of the dirt buildup. And then here we have the rest of his body. Now, a lot of fantastic detail. I love the overall look of Radukar. I mean, he is just an absolutely stunning model. Uh, fits very much in with the, the story as well as um, being used in uh, your Age of Sigmar armies. And with Soulbike Gravelords essentially being the, the new vampire counts, I definitely wanted to make sure that I get really as many of the named characters as I can. Uh, Belladama, who's the one that actually gave Radikar the blood kiss, uh, she came out today as well, but we did not get her, uh, mostly because um, I know that I would likely never actually field her in the game, um, unless we are to find out that you know she somehow has like a side mission or something that can be done with Curse City. That's really going to be the only way I'm going to end up picking her up. All right, so now we're going to open up Lady Anika. Now, what honestly surprised me about Lady Anika and Kritza is that with both of those, I was expecting them to be in the blister, like the vampire lord we looked at last week. And they were in these boxes instead. Um, so definitely a surprise there. Now, her sprue itself is much smaller. And I suspect the reason why she got this size box is just because of her um, war scroll that comes in this. Because usually when you have like the smaller figures, you don't always get the, a war scroll with them. Um, but uh, definitely a, a detailed guide. It is a more simple model. And then we also have our longer base just because of her dress is trailing so long. Now I know a lot of people were complaining about the dress aspect just because of the fact that uh, you know she's such a small model itself uh, minus the dress. Like you could have you know a circle model or sorry circle base and have her dress kind of trail off the side a little bit and have it work. Uh, so a lot of people were kind of surprised that she's on the oval bases and uh, because of that it does affect um, you know, kind of the area around her and you know, how she's perceived when targeting. But with this one, you know, looking at the picture, you know, there's not a lot of details except for on the kind of fur collar that she's got and looking at it in person, you know, that is still very much the fact. Uh, but it's still a you know, cool looking model. Definitely looking forward to uh, getting started on her. Now, when I build her, I don't think I'm gonna go with the same colors when I, when I actually go to paint. Um, probably end up doing something more of a, like a blood red for her dress or something like that. And her her hair, probably going to end up being more like either a black or a gray overall, but um, that's just my personal preference. All right, so here is Kritza. Now, just out of curiosity, did any of you catch the... Uh, the Dominion preview that happened this morning. Well, by the time you watch this, uh, it'll at the very least be yesterday. Um, now, uh, personally, I have never been a fan of Order Armies in general because I've always gone more for the Undead or uh, Chaos specifically, um, which is why a majority of the stuff that you've seen me unbox in the past has been Chaos or Undead related. And with that being the case, uh, 
you know, we've amassed a collection of Stormcast Eternals over the years. Um, never built any of them, you know, even did the Warcry box of Stormcast Eternals. Still haven't built any of them. And even picked up some Griffhounds for them to be used in Warcry. And, you know, because of the fact that they are order doesn't really fit, you know, the the dynamic or the look that I like in my armies. Uh, you know, some people always prefer the good guys. You know, in video games and movies and stuff, I typically prefer the bad guys or the villains. And uh, death and chaos fit that to a T. And like destruction, you know, is more is less of a villain uh, overall, in my opinion, um, and more of a just kind of a, a mindless force more often than not. Um, now with the new box set, uh, with Dominion, I know that's going to be coming out sometime in June. Um, they, they haven't actually announced the official date yet. Um, but definitely some really cool stuff, like some absolutely fantastic, uh, Stormcast Eternal models, probably some of the best I've ever seen by far. Uh, at least, uh, in terms of the quality of the sculpts, um, and just the way they generally look. And then the new Destruction Faction, uh, I believe they were called like Hobgrots, something like that. Basically uh, the new Age of Sigmar version of the Hobgoblins that we used to have in uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Uh, but I know that uh, in Age of Sigmar, everything's kind of been getting you know, newer names. My guess is likely that's because it's more IP related to basically you know, lock down uh, those namings so that way uh, they won't get in trouble for using terms like Hobgoblin or, or Orc like they used to. Um, where, uh, you know, Orcs have now become Oryx. Uh, you know, basically the same generally sounded name, but uh, a very different uh, spelling for sure. Now with Kritza, he is just one base. He's also on an oval base uh, because his cape does trail a bit, uh, mostly with the super long rat tails that are attached to it. And then he's also covered in giant rats. Kind of looks more like a vampire who, uh, or even like a vampire hunter that, or witch hunter for that matter, that is killed a bunch of Skaven and basically skinned them and wears them as a cloak. Uh, but definitely a lot more detail than uh, on Lady Anika and it's in my opinion it's a fun looking model uh, just because it kind of defies the general look of the um, the actual faction itself and actually let me get that war scroll out um, like I know the current version of Age of Sigmar doesn't have much in terms of uh, rules for like characters who hate each other being used in the same army. But I'm just curious if there is anything like that here. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about um, the the dislike for Radukar um, that is in the lore, and but basically, you know, Radukar intending to kill him accidentally gave him the blood kiss somehow, um, and basically kind of left him in a pile of dead rats, and it, by doing that, he kind of absorbed some of their animal nature. Uh, kind of like how Radikar gets more beast-like because of the wolf and because of Belladama. Uh, you know, he does the same thing, but he can essentially turn into a, a swarm of rats and then reappear elsewhere. Uh, so it definitely ma give, makes him an ideal model for being used for like capturing objectives and things like that, where that are uh, being held by like a line, kind of blocking your path. Um, so definitely some cool. Uh, tactics can be done using him.
right, so now we're looking at the dire wolves. Now, Dire Wolves is a name that's been used by other franchises in the past, so it makes me kind of wonder why they haven't gotten their own kind of special name. Um, like uh, Trolls becoming Trogoths and the uh, Hobgoblins becoming uh, Hobgrots. Um, so I honestly expected them to have a different name, but I was basically calling them that before, you know, like when I first saw the pictures, before I actually read what they were called um just because of the general look and what they used to be uh but you know we definitely have a lot of detail a lot of uh, kind of rotting skin over bone muscle and things like that um uh, and then one thing i thought was kind of interesting is on the inside you definitely have a kind of a lot more uh kind of negative detail there so like if you were to use like some green stuff and uh kind of push it in there and use it as a mold uh, kind of get some stuff that like a pile of, that looks like more gut like uh just because of that so nice unintentional bonus there and so it it comes with 10 dire wolves between the kit it's two different sprues and it looks like they are truly different yeah they are um so it's two unique sprues that you're getting and definitely looking forward to uh, building up some of these. And especially the the one howling at the moon is by far my favorite of uh, the lot. But as I was saying about the, the preview today, um, you know, n never being really a fan of order, um, you know, these are by far like some of the best models that they've come out with in the range for order, uh, specifically Stormcast Eternals more than anything else, which I've always thought have been uh, a bit overpowered. And, you know, I, I've seen the term um, Sigmarines thrown around. I've, I know I've definitely used it a few times talking about them. And in this is by far like the first time that I've actually seen a set that I would be willing to, to actually play that army, uh, give them a try just on look alone. Um, but more so the same with the, uh, the Hobgrots because uh, they just look absolutely fantastic. It's so much more detailed than the Starcast in my opinion. Um, but that's just because in, you know, in the nature of order you know everything's more uniform um more organized where you know the hobgrots you know there's a lot more individuality um you know same with like an undead force too so we have our many page assembly guide for the arcanaut So this is the main body of the ship itself, as well as some of the mechanisms. Here we have the uh, the main balloons, or at least the main balloon, and uh, yeah, they're both there. Uh, so both balloons there. And then here we have the the deck of the ship, um, as well as some, like the gunners and some bombs and things like that ready to go, um, and then. One of the biggest bases I will have worked with by the time we're done. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, a lot of detail on this ship. I, when I first found out that this was being used, I was really excited. Just because of the fact that I now had an excuse to build one of these. Since I don't play Caradon Overlords. Or Caradron Overlords, rather. And, you know, I'm always a big fan of putting together models that just look cool. Um, but sometimes... You know, I need an excuse, really, to uh, try some models out. And uh, in terms of this one, the fact that you know they use—I'm pretty sure it's a frigate—but um, the ironclad is a much cooler-looking version, uh, much bigger, and looks like it would actually house all of the uh, the troops that are being used in Curse City. So, and I went for or went for the one that's more of a realistic size. 
And honestly, if I had like a 3D printer, what I would love to do is like on the base, kind of do like, you know, much smaller buildings to make it look like this is flying way above uh, to safety. But since I don't, I will either have to try to model some of that by hand or basically have it you know, more or less floating just a little bit above the ground uh, to allow for escape. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up Kragnos or Kragnos. I'm not sure what it is. Um, typically when I've watched the videos talking about it, um, about his upcoming release, I usually have the sound off and read subtitles just because of the fact that, you know, I usually have something else going on that I need to listen to. So, you know, whether it be kids running around or something like that. Uh, now, this is actually the first Broken Realms book I have been able to actually look at myself. Uh, this is the fourth in the series, and from what I've read, it looks like this is going to be the last one. Um, kind of, kind of feels like a um, like a summer comic book event where you know like Marvel or DC has like a big event that ties in all the books, and you know that's what Broken Realm seems to be doing. Um, and then we have our Act One with a lot of things going on, a lot of lore, and it's bringing in some of the details about some of the new models coming up, like. Next week we're also getting those two witch hunters, which I'm hoping to be able to get a set myself because I have a feeling that they're also going to make an appearance in Curse City. Um, again, completely uh, speculation. And so then we got Act Two. So it looks like the majority of this is going to be uh, lore related. Uh, as I've said, this is the first Broken Realms book I've actually been able to look at. Um, and then we go into the rules section a little more than halfway through the book and uh, basically talking about a campaign, uh, battle plans, realms of battle, streets of death. Um, so it's basically meant, that one's meant more for actually fighting battles in streets of a city. Uh, you know, how to use barricades and hidden defenders and bricks and things like that. Um, so that definitely gives a, a new layer to the game. Uh, one of the battle plans is Clash of Giants, which is basically uh, Greenskins versus Kragnos. I suspect that if I were to read this closely, that it's probably gonna be something along the lines of what we've seen in Warcry, where you would be able to actually uh, take Kragnos into your army if once you've defeated him. Um, or it's just more story based than anything else. <sighs> and then we also have battle tome updates, which those are, I was aware of would be in the book. Uh, changes that have happened to some of the others out there. Um, so like in here we include War Scrolls 4, Kragnos, himself uh, some updates to the bad moon loon shrine we have uh, a battalion the moon jumper stampede moon biters squiggle anch stonking me stomping mega mob so definitely a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, then we also have updates to Lariel the Everqueen, the new Warsong Revenant are in here as well. And then some more battalions. Uh, we have uh, the Talon of Selenesh, or the Voice of Selenesh, depending on uh, which way you build her. Uh, as well as the Exquisite Pursuit, um, which those ones are more um, in line with the um, the the box sets that you'd get uh, with with uh, you know individual 
armies and things like that ready to go. You know, I believe they're about like somewhere between 800 and 1,000 points uh, typically. And then uh, a great way to get some of the uh, you know, more exclusive models that you'd be looking for. Um, but we have some you know, things for uh, Skaven Tide, you know, big, big rat ogres, uh, which I'm guessing are meant to be much larger. Um, but you know, it includes the, the Doom Coven, which is three uh, Storm Fiends, a, a Warp Fire Cannon, and then a Bombardier, which surprisingly is very few models. Yeah. But depending on price, might be a great way to get a warp fire cannon, the bombardier, and three um, storm fiends. The the butcher herd uh, for beasts of chaos uh, definitely has me interested because it's actually got some kind of like mini minotaurs that I've never actually seen before. Um, but of course, I don't also I also don't play them at all. So. Um, quite possible that I've just completely overlooked them but definitely a lot of cool stuff here I'm really looking forward to actually reading the lore I want to pick up the other three books before I start reading this uh, but really looking forward to it uh, thank you to games workshop for sharing this with us uh, really like I said I'm really looking forward to giving it a read uh, Kragnos looks fantastic I do hope that eventually I'll be able to get my hands on uh, one of him as well but I don't see that one happening anytime soon just because of uh, stock at local stores and things like that. Um, but that's it for tonight. Um, now, this, like I said, is available for pre-order now. Um, I believe that last time I looked at the Games Workshop site, there were still some available, so you should still be able to pre-order it. Everything else either came out today or has been out for a while that we showed you, so uh, definitely some cool things. Uh, really looking forward to the new Vampire Count stuff, or sorry, Soul Blight, Gravelord uh, characters and the Dire Wolves, so definitely looking forward to adding them to my collection. Uh, but overall, that's it for tonight. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you all next week. Uh, where we hope to do some uh, <clears throat> further unboxings. Maybe I'll be able to get uh, a hold of uh, those two Witch Hunter models for order. Um, I've always been a big fan of Witch Hunters, so pretty much any time that you have a chance of getting a Witch Hunter, I usually try to take it. So uh, definitely look forward to them, but I'll catch you guys all next week. Thank you again for watching.